Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, I'm so happy you're all joining me. Um, today, I'm going to share with you a little PowerPoint that I made and give you a brief overview. And then we're gonna hop into the editing tutorial. And then at the end, we'll have time for Q&A. So let's take a look at my beautiful presentation. <laughs> okay, how to edit like a pro by Tina Lee. That is me. Okay. Okay. So, so who am I? Most of you here probably know me, um, but in case you don't, I'm a content creator and traveler and about two years ago, I started photography and editing. In the beginning, actually, I only just started learning editing. Two years ago was when I first downloaded Lightroom, which is Pretty incredible if you think about it but my life has changed since and that's not even an exaggeration yeah if you um, want to see some of the pictures that I take as well as edit you can go to my Instagram it is of leather and lace I know it's a, a very weird name and completely irrelevant to what I'm doing but that, that's how I started my blog so you can see here these are some of the pictures that I edited and this is my feed because I obsessively color coordinate my feed um, and this was only made possible because I started to learn how to edit and then with the knowledge you can have a lot of control over your content. So why editing is so important? Um, so you can find a lot of before and after pictures. I put them in the bubble up folder here um, this is the how to edit like a pro. Uh, you can go into this before and after folder and have, I have several examples. So you can see how big of a difference editing can make. Uh, the before is just a very murky, gray, yucky photo. And after you can really transform it. And I think this is the beauty of editing is that a photo or the weather the, on the day of your shoot doesn't have to determine how the photo turns out. If you learn editing, you can um, do a lot more things. Okay, let's share this presentation. Okay, so this is the before and after. Um, somebody asked in the chat earlier, what is my favorite photo? This one, this one is my all time favorite photo. That's my husband, Mr. D. <laughs> that was us in Shanghai. So this is what you can achieve um, with some very powerful editing tools. So uh, before we talk about the actual editing of an image, I do think it's very important to mention that the um, photo shoot itself and the settings itself that you are um, doing is also very important. So good preparation for a photo shoot can ensure that your photos turn out to be ideal for editing. So the right timing, the right location, concept, theme. So this is a good way to um, communicate with your photographer, whoever is taking your photos for you. So what I like to do before a photo shoot is I really look up the location. I take pictures at the location. If I'm not there, I go on Google Map look at Google Earth or um, I search on Google Images and then I determine a concept and theme and outfit and I put them all into um, a mood board. So I like to create a mood board. So here you can see I have notes. I have a note that I created on the concept, the color scheme, what I'm going to bring, the camera. And then I also have a, um, the location link as well as lots of photo inspiration and outfits. So the beauty of this is if you want to share with anybody, say your photographer, your stylist, um, your makeup artist, all you have to do is go here and go to roll an instant web page. You can determine the title and the cover image that you want to use. I'm going to go with this one and you just create a roll. So now this, what this does is it creates a website and you can just share this link with anybody on your team who is involved in this photo shoot. Ooh, I got a notification that my internet is slow. Is everybody following along okay? Yeah, that's actually a bug. We're fixing it. Okay, great. 
So um, continuing on. So what you can do is now you can see you have this full website that gives you all of the, ins um, all of the details and the information. Um, you can make little notes like this, and then you can share it with all of the people involved in your project. So I think this is a good way to prepare for um, your photo shoot before you even get to the editing stage. So that's a tool um, you can definitely make use of completely free, thanks to Bubble Up. Okay, so before you start editing, um, some really, really crucial, important things is we need to understand the correct exposure. And as you can see, this photo here is super dark and you think, oh, stop. But exposing for the light outside, so that is the sky. And by doing that in post editing, we can bring back the highlights, we can bring up the shadows. So all of these shadowed areas, uh, we can fix that. So um, just really make sure to have your exposure settings correct. When you are um, exposing your photo for, let's say you're indoors and you're shooting outwards, it's, it looks really bright outside, right? So you wanna make sure that you're underexposing your picture so that whatever is outside doesn't get blown out. Okay, so unfortunately the camera quality also affects this greatly. So if you have an iPhone, who here uses an iPhone? No shame in using an iPhone. iPhones are super powerful nowadays. You can do all kinds of editing, everything that I explained to you in this tutorial on your phone as well. Good news. Um, however, if you're taking a photo like this one demonstrated here, if you're using your phone, the amount of detail that you can bring back could be limited. Okay, so that's why um, a good camera is so important. And um, on that note, I have also included for you in case you're curious about what camera I personally use, you can find it here in the folder. I have linked all of my personal photography gear. It's um, a Sony. And personally, I think Sony is the best <laughs> because they should sponsor me. <laughs> because Sony, um, Sony has the highest dynamic range, meaning if the contrast is huge in a photo, like the shadows are super dark and the highlights super bright, Sony has a very, very good ability to bring back the highlights and bring up the shadows and retain a lot of information and data in the photos. So I highly recommend Sony. You can check out my photography gear in the bubble up folder. And, you know, obviously not, the price point is not right for everyone. Um, but you can have a look at what's out there. So the next step uh, when you're shooting before editing that you want to take note of is the horizon. So we want to make sure that the horizon of the picture is straight because we don't want like a wonky picture, right? And when I am shooting, I'm shooting for Instagram. And so with that, you will need to crop it four by five. So take that into consideration when you are taking the photo. Lastly, um, oh, let me reshare. <laughs> Hi guys, I thought you missed my beautiful face. Let me reshare my screen and share the whole screen. So, oh, it's my text. Okay, so now you can see, now you can see me. Okay. Um, the next thing you want to really take note of when you're taking photos is if you are shooting with a camera, please, please, please shoot with RAW. Um, RAW basically is the unprocessed um, data file. Like it's not technically an image file. JPEG is an image file. JPEG is a compressed image file of the photo that you just took. So I always, always shoot in RAW. And the reason is the raw will come out looking very dull and ugly, but with the raw, there's a lot of adjustments that you can create. It is a larger file. It um, retains a lot more data in the file so that you can do the most powerful editing. Okay, I'm just gonna take a look at the chat. Show us how you edit in Lightroom. Yes, so good question. Can you shoot raw with your new iPhone? 
uh, you cannot shoot <laughs> with a new iPhone. But if you shoot with a phone, I mean a camera, and you import it into your iPhone, you can um, use Lightroom Mobile to edit it. So Lightroom Mobile does have that capability. Will you take more same photo with different exposure and to Photoshop? Okay. Yeah, that's right. Zippy made a very good point. You can shoot raw with your phone, but it's specific with apps. So if you're talking about built-in phone capability, it's not um, taken in raw. Okay, sorry guys, there's a lot of questions, so I'm gonna have to move on uh, and we'll get to your questions later on, okay? So uh, these are the softwares that I recommend for editing. Um, Adobe Lightroom Classic CC is the only one that I personally use um, along with Photoshop CC. So Lightroom Classic CC is the traditional Lightroom that provides very powerful editing. Leave a comment if you already have Lightroom Classic CC. Yeah, if you don't, you can highly consider investing in it because um, if you're uh, going to get serious about photo editing and especially if you're already taking photos with a professional camera, um, this is very, very important. The next one is Lightroom CC. This is actually a new version of Lightroom that Adobe came out with and it is a cloud-based simplified version. Um, so it has like more simplified editing uh, capabilities. And of course, Photoshop. Um, I love Photoshop. I don't edit the colors with Photoshop. I always do it in Lightroom Classic first and then I input um, the photo into Photoshop. And in Photoshop, I fix the skin. You know, I can delete people from the background. I can fix my body shape if I think my face is too big or my tummy is too fat. <laughs> I fix it in Photoshop. I'm just kidding, I don't do that, okay? <laughs> okay, um, um, yes. And Lightroom Mobile, basically, is very self-explanatory. It is a mobile version that you can use on your phone. And um, it has basically the same editing functions as the Lightroom Classic, but um, it's not as powerful as the desktop version. Okay, let's move on to, okay, so the next is the editing process. And now I'm going to jump into Lightroom Classic CC. Um, just so you know, it is a paid app. I believe Lightroom Mobile is free. Um, okay, let's do this. Okay, I'm just, now I'm going to just screen share my, my Lightroom so that we can make sure. Okay, can everybody see? Here we go. Okay. Ooh. Yes. Okay, Th thanks you guys for answering. A lot of yeses. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna keep this chat open so I can see what you guys are saying. Uh, how do I do that? Okay, yes. So now we're in the develop folder. What we want to do is, oh, where am I? Okay. Um, okay. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, so this is um, just three folders that I'm going to use to demonstrate, but we're going to edit this one from the beginning, from the beginning to the end. Okay, so this is um, after editing. If you use the slash key on your keyboard, you can see the before. So this is a shortcut, keyboard shortcut. Um, if you're unsure about keyboard shortcuts, Z is zoom, and you can also use your fingers to zoom like so. So you can see that it is very nicely focused. Ooh -hoo, ooh -hoo, that's very side face. Okay, so, um, okay, I'm going to reset this image so that we can start from the beginning. Um, okay. First of all, when we come into this image, the first thing that I do is crop. Here you can see this is the crop function. 
Um, the reason why I do that is because if you're going to edit the whole image, let's say you don't even need this part or you don't need this part, then it's just better that you crop it to begin with. Let's, like, let's do this. I like to be in the very center, so I'm going to crop right around here. So cropping first for whatever you, um, your image is will help you to sort of know what you don't have to deal with. So I like to crop first. And then let's straighten the horizon. I like to look at these lines. This is a line, this is a line, and this is a line. And I obsessively make sure that the lines are straight. So I think this is pretty good. The grid is a good guidance. So you can see this is wrong. So the grid, it helps guide through to crop your image. Hi, Cheryl. This will be definitely able, available for replay. So don't worry if you don't catch something right away. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit. Blah. Um, next, let's go into the temperature and tint. This is just the preliminary adjustment um, of the image because this is a sunset image taken in Bangkok um, in a new building called Mahanakon. And so I tend to like to make my sunsets a bit more yellow. So as you can see, the temperature just determines how blue or how yellow it is. So let's increase it a little bit like so. Next up is the tint. The tint is how you perceive the color of the image, basically. Um, you can go very, very green, which I personally don't prefer, or you can go very pink. Um, I think I tend to go towards the pinker side. So you can see I put the tint at 31. And just so you know, the temperature and tint for every image is different. It depends on how the photo was taken, um, what the white balance of it was when the photo was taken. Okay. Next, after the preliminary adjustment, let's make it a little bit more warm. Ooh, okay, that's better. Next, you want to go to um, the tone, which is basically the brightness of it, the light and the brightness. So um, usually the first thing I do when I go into an image is go to the highlights and shadows here. I bring down the highlights. Okay, ooh, immediately, it's already looking a lot nicer. Um, and I usually bring up the shadows so that um, you can see more details of what's happening down here. So this is already a very good step. Well, it's already looking pretty nice. Um, usually, for more contrast, I like to bring up the whites and bring down the black. And what that means is just like the white parts here, white part here, white part here will be more white, as you can see. Um, and the blacks will be more black. So the difference between the highlight and shadow versus the white and the black, they're not the same thing, even though they seem to have the same function. The highlight is, all of this is in the highlighted area. So it will bring down the highlight, the color for all of this area. So the white is technically mostly just the white colors of the image. Okay, so just know the difference. But for this particular one, because I want the sky to look very nice and creamy. So I'm gonna decrease the whites as well so that you can see the sky looks even darker. So you can get like a nice sunset. Um, Typically, I like to increase the clarity. So um, if you zoom in, you'll be able to see without the, when you lower the clarity, it looks very blurry and dreamy and fog, like almost foggy. But if you increase the clarity a lot, um, there's a huge amount of contrast. So I tend to go for around 20, between 20 to 30 for my clarity. Um, because this gives definition for the subject. It, it makes all of the items and all of the views in the back pop. I think this is um, a great tool to always use for clarity. Next, um, I always increase the vibrance around 20 as well. Because um, as you can see, this is before and then after 
Okay, I think this one we need this. So in this particular photo, there aren't a lot of different colors. So I'm gonna increase the vibrance by a little bit more than I normally would to maybe 30 to really bring out the nice sunset, orange, and then the red of the dress. Okay, is this looking okay so far? Um, if everyone's following me okay. Um, these are all of like the basic, basic editing steps that I begin with, with every single photo. Um, every single photo, I like to make sure the light is nice and balanced. One thing to be careful of, I notice a lot of people when they first start to edit, they love to bring the shadow all the way up because it feels like really bright and really nice. But um, it's nice to have some contrast and have uh, some parts of me in the shadows. So to have more contrast in the image is, is something that comes over time, I think, that you prefer. Okay, let's also decrease this exposure so we can get the background to be even more dark. Okay, I think that's nice. Okay, let's move on. So the tonal curve. The tonal curve is a um, function where you can move these um, curves and highlights and darks to achieve even more uh, of a contrast in your image. Typically, for photographers, like to do what's called the S curve, so it kind of looks like this to add more contrast to an image. Um, personally, I don't use the tonal curve so much, but in this case, um, I'm going to decrease the highlights a little bit, just a little bit, so that we can have this nice orange. Okay, so a brief, someone's asking a brief explanation of the S-curve. Okay, yeah, sorry, I really went through that really quick. So the S-curve, basically, this is the highlights of your image. This is the um, shadows, right? So if you increase, if you pull this curve up, you will see that all of the lighter parts become brighter. Wait. And then the shadow is decreasing all of the dark parts. And then now when you come down to this bar, another good question is what is the difference between the curve and the bar? They're the same thing. <laughs> this is just the curve being pulled. You can pull the curve physically to adjust your image or you can adjust it using the bar. So as you can see, you increase the highlight here and lower the dark darks. Again, let's reset. So, okay, by the way, guys, if you want to reset anything, double click on it. There. Okay. Um, let's move on. Okay, I will I'll answer some more questions a bit later on. Okay. So, um, the next step is the color. Now, this is a very powerful tool if you have many different colors in the photo and you want to bring out a particular color. For example, if you want this red to really pop, you could go like this, really saturated. But I think it's a bit much. I'm actually going to desaturate it because I think it's too red. Um, if you want the orange of this shadow of these, these oranges to pop, you can also increase the orange like so. Oh, it's not bad. Okay, just a little bit. Let's not overdo it. Um, and the same thing, basically you can fix everything. For example, you can go into the hue and change the hue of the red. So let's take a look at the red dress. Oop. If we bring the hue to the this side, it becomes more um, pink. And if you bring the hue to this side, it's very orange. Um, I like it the way it is. Maybe I'll bring it a little to the right. This, these are honestly your personal preferences. Whatever feels right to your eye, um, you adjust accordingly. A tip, if you don't know, like, what is this color? I'm not sure. Is this blue? Is this, I don't know. You can go into this circle here, this circle here click on it, and then go to this color 
and then drag. Okay, now look at the colors. You can drag left, drag right. You can see that um, it will show you which colors are, are being affected. I hope that's clear. Okay. Okay, let's move on because this image doesn't have too many colors. Oh, actually, I think here there's some purple. Um, because for this particular image, what I'm trying to achieve is a very orange, yellow, like sunset vibe. So I'm going to go in and decrease the purple. It, you can see the difference. If you increase the saturation, you can see there's some purple here, there's some purple here. I'm going to desaturate the purple. Oops. Desaturate the purple. There. So it looks a little bit more neutral. I like that. Next is the split toning. Oh, sorry, I'm going to zoom it. Okay, how do I? Huh. Ooh. Okay, right there. Let's do this. Oh, okay, there we go. Now you have a bigger image. Okay. Okay, perfect. Okay, the next um, function that we're going to talk about is split toning. Split toning is really, really useful for certain images, but not for all images. So this is a sunset picture. What split toning means is um, the highlights, you can choose a color in this hue bar. Let's say I want my highlights to look very blue and green. Then you can just increase the saturation and you can see only the highlighted parts are being fixed. Obviously we don't want that. <laughs> That's really bad. Um, typically for a sunset shot, I like to stay around this area. Um, I like the orangey color for a sunset, so I'm going to increase the saturation. So you can see the difference by increasing the saturation. All of the highlights become whatever color you choose here on the hue. So maybe just do a little bit, like eight in terms of saturation. And for the shadows, it is the same concept. So this shadow color, this shadow color, this is the shadow. I am in the shadow. So if you want the shadow to be a different color, this is the main purpose of split toning. So let's say you want the shadows to be cooler, then you can bring it all the way to the blue or the green and then increase the saturation like that. So you can see only the shadow areas have changed, but I don't like that. So let's just increase it by a bit, make it a bit more consistent in the whole image. Okay, moving on. Um, is everybody following along okay? Just um, type a yes into the chat so I know. Great, thanks Rosie, thanks Joanna, okay. So the next one is the detail of the image. Let's say you accidentally took a photo that is not super focused like this one, okay? You can go into sharpening and try and fix it a little bit. The higher you go, the sharper the, the edges, the details are. But since this picture is very nicely um, focused, you can just keep it a bit lower, like around 36. Okay. And next is noise reduction. So let's say this was taken at night um, and it was uh, very high ISO, meaning there's a lot of noise in this picture. What you can do is increase the noise reduction. And what it will do is, well, this is not the best picture to explain. Okay, let's have a look. So look at these details here. No noise reduction. If you look, there's a good amount of noise on my face. But with noise reduction, it blurs out the noise. Okay. That, that's pretty clear, right? Um, but what noise reduction also does though, it can make your subject a little bit more blurry. 
So be careful when you're using noise reduction. I tend not to go over 50. And in this case, this is already a pretty good definition, high quality image, so I'm gonna keep it down, like at 15. Okay, moving on to lens correction. Lens correction is when you take the image with um, a particular lens, you can go into here and enable profile corrections. What it does is it will automatically automatically correct um, the image for you. Let's say if it was distorted, if it, um, how do I explain this? This is really hard to explain. If it was originally distorted, let's say it was a fisheye lens, um, then you would need to use this to adjust the fisheye. Okay, I'm gonna show you an example here. Bear with me. Um, okay, never mind. I don't have the right hard drive in. Um, I'll show you guys later when I when we have time. I'm gonna make sure we have time for everything. Okay. And then what you can do instead of using the automatic profile corrections based on whatever uh, lens you took the photo with, what you can do is use the manual lens correction. The manual lens correction is basically like this. You can really distort it if you increase the distortion, or you can make it more of a fisheye effect if you lower the distortion. So, um, little trick, if you want to look a little bit skinnier, just increase this distortion by a little bit. Okay, nice. Yeah, I think that's good. Um, but just be careful when you're increasing the distortion, you don't want to do it so much that the lines are now curved. Mm, yeah, not good. Okay, just a little bit. Exactly. So if you guys are looking at the chat, Erin explained it really well. It straightens the curvature, the curvature of the picture um, based on how the lens originally captured it since lenses are round. So the lens, when it's capturing the image and depending on what focal length you're using, like a really wide angle or a really long lens, you may need to adjust, do lens correction accordingly. Thanks, Erin. Okay, lastly, or yes, lastly, let's do transform. So transform is a really useful tool. Um, let's say this was off center. Um, you can fix it. By, by using this. You know how like when you ask a boyfriend to take a photo and they couldn't get it straight, they couldn't get the horizon straight, you can fix it here. <laughs> so um, visually also, this is the vertical. You can tilt it and tilt it the other way as well. So when, they, when the person who took the photo, if it wasn't, um, if you feel like you wanna look taller, let's say your legs are here. You want to look taller, you just increase the vertical, tilt it a little bit. Okay. Okay, um, actually we have a pretty good question right now from Cheryl that asks about how do you use Lightroom to tan your own skin? I'm gonna show you really quickly before we move on because it's back in this color section. Normally, um, when you want to tan your skin color, um, skin uh, color varies, right? But generally it's, orange. So what you can do, let's see, zoom in a little bit, if you go to the luminance of the color selection and bring down the orange, normally it will make you a bit more tanned. Um, however, because this image is mostly orange anyway, that's not the best way to do it. The best way to do it is go into the adjustment brush here and then you have this little uh, brush and you can start brushing your face. That's just the mask overlay. It shows you where you're brushing. Okay, see? Okay, this is just an example. Let's turn that off. And now you can go into this um, editing selection bar and you can lower the exposure a little bit. Okay, whoa, look how tan I look. Okay, that's not pretty. Personally, um, 
I don't like to look tanned, so I don't really do this. In fact, I do the opposite. Usually I brush my face and I increase the exposure because I want to look pale. Okay, so let's delete that. Um, okay, um, Natalia is asking a good question. How do you see the before and after while you're editing? With the shortcut key is slash, like this. Now you can see the before and the after. Slash key, slash, okay? Um, okay, let's come back down to transform. The, the beauty of transform is not just the vertical and the horizontal. Okay, let's reset that. Okay. Um, the beauty of it is, let's say you're standing and you want to look taller. Oh, also, good. Jerome makes a really good point in the chat. You can use uh, um, this YY here. To side if that's what you prefer. So this is a before, this is an after. I I personally um, like to oh backslash or front lash. I'll type it into the chat. Oh no, oops. Everyone. There. Um that one. <laughs> so yes, you can use Y to to see it side by side. Uh, I don't I don't like it. No. Okay. I personally just like to see um, how it looks like this. With the transform, another tip is if you want to, if you're standing in the picture and you want to look taller, go to this little secret knob here called aspect. Increase. So just look at the image, okay? Oh, taller. Okay. And the opposite. So let's say you're standing in a, in a picture and you want to look taller. Just just increase the aspect just a little bit, just to fool the eyes, but not too much that you distort everything. Okay, I'm sitting in this picture, so it doesn't make sense to change that. Okay, and um, for the other things here, personally, I don't use these the calibration, the effects. I don't use those. So. I'm not gonna go into detail. Um, next, I'm going to explain. So this is already a nice looking picture. However, we want to make sure that you really draw the eye to the center, to the subject. So let me show you a quick slide to demonstrate. Okay. I hope you can all see this. So here you can see the before, when you're assessing the image, this is the image. This is the center focus of the image and this is where everyone's eyes will be directed. The light is coming from the top. So keeping that in mind, let's make some more adjustments to the image um, before we export it. Shared my screen again. Uh, Lightroom. Okay. So what we're going to do is go into these bad boys here. This is called the radio filter. Shift M. So I click on that. What I normally do if the focus is in the center, I create a nice big oval around it. This is going to be my vignette. Okay. So what it does is, oops, we got to tick off invert so that it um, affects the outside. So I'm going to turn on the show selected mask layer, mask overlay, so you can see the red parts are the parts that you would be adjusting with the circle. And if you invert it, you're adjusting the circle inside. With a feather, you can determine how, um, how much, like this means it's very blurry, and typically I have it, for the vignette, I have it around 30 usually. So there. So you can see this is like a nice vignette around the image. Now we can go in and lower the exposure. Like so I like to lower the shadows. And 
and lower the black. Okay, so let's see the without this radio filter and with. Without, kind of flat, and with, it really directs your eyes to the center because you're basically making the, I think it's a bit dark actually. Okay, just adjust it a tiny bit. You are basically making this area a bit darker and by making the unimportant details darker, you're directing your eye to the center. So let's do another one. Let's say, I think this sun is a little bit white. I want my sun to be kind of yellow. So let's make a little circle around the sun and bring up the temperature maybe a little bit. Make sure the center is high. So, oh, there. So now you have like this nice yellow orange glow. There. See? Before, you know, after. It's just a tiny little adjustment. I don't think you necessarily have to do this. Let's just say if this was a cloudy day and you didn't have this nice orange here, what you can also do is use this radial filter again, pull it really long, and then adjust the colors. Oh my God, that's really yellow. So you get the idea. So these tools allow you to um, edit uh, certain areas. So let's say you wanted this to look a certain color. And it's a very powerful tool and you can adjust it however you like. Uh, I'm gonna delete this, oops, <gasps> no. I'm just gonna delete this um, radio filter. One more thing I want to do is I want the subject to pop even more. So let's go back into the radio filter and make a little circle just around me. So for this, I typically increase the exposure just a teeny bit, and I like to increase the whites also a teeny bit. So what it does is like these little light areas, these little light areas would become more pronounced, even more. Okay. So that's like the local adjustment. Let me show you without this circle, you look a little bit dull. But when you add this um, adjustment filter, uh, well, radial filter in the center where the subject is, and just, just by increase just the exposure a little bit, you really direct people's eyes into the center. Okay, I hope that was clear. Another thing you can do, this is um, the gradiated filter, graduated filter, sorry. And you can pull it down. Let's say your sky is still too bright. You can pull it down. Um, as you can see, the pink area is the area that's affected. And this area is just a nice gradient. So if you pull this area longer, the more of the gradient. If you pull it shorter, let's say like this, then it's a very sharp edge. Okay, so this is a radial filter. So I tend to like a nice blended edge and we can adjust this. Um, I had a question, what is the lens used for this picture? Yes, it is a 16 to 35 f 2.8. It was a, my Canon lens when I used to have the Canon lens. If you're uncertain, you can see all the details of the images right here in the histogram. The ISO was 100, the focal length was 21 millimeter, f-stop is 2.8 and shutter speed was really high. Okay, so get back to this graduated filter. I just want to decrease the highlights even more. Mm, yeah, I like that. So without the graduated filter and with the graduated filter. So you can do it anywhere. If you want this part to even be even darker, you can create another graduated filter and decrease the shadows. See the difference? So let's just um, 
lower the shadows here. Okay, great. And I actually think that is my final image. I like how it looks. Um, my eyes are really focused on, on the person and uh, we have this nice vignette around it. And there's a really nice sunset vibe. If you really, really want to make the highlights pop, what you can do is go to your brush here, make it very, very little, and then go in on your person. For all of the highlighted parts, just brush over it. Let's say I want my face to pop and my neck. Let me show you the areas that I'm painting over, like this. Or the, the rim of this rim light is nice for here and here. So what you do is then go to the exposure. Ooh, okay, that's too much. But I'm just demonstrating that you can increase um, the highlights on certain areas, like locally adjust them. Like so. And let's also add a little bit on my leg. So my leg looks nice and glowy. There we go. Um, that's looking good. So let me just show you without it is like so. And with just adds a little bit more of an accent. I think add more here. Yeah. So this is just an extra step if you want to. Okay, uh, good question. Can we erase any area we brushed on? Yes. If you, um, if you look at this brush right now, it is a positive sign. If you click on option, it becomes negative, and then you can delete whatever part you want. So you gotta keep your fingers on the option key while you're deleting, okay? Um, okay, so that is the end of the editing for this image. Let's just go back to this slide and take a look at other images because this is only one example. Before you export it, you want to really assess the image and think, what is the focus of this image? For example, this one, it was a center focus with the light coming down. Um, with this one on the right, it's just a much more flat image and the center, and I mean, the subject is in the center. It's about blending in. So I'm not excessively creating any light source anywhere. This image taken in Bali by my friend Jerome. Um, <laughs> this was, um, the sun was coming from this way, the light. So um, let me show you the editing process of, ooh, oops, I accidentally pressed stop screen share. Okay, let's go back. Let's take a look at this image, Bali. Um, sorry, just give me a sec, I'm loading the image, here it is. If we look at um, how I've edited this, and we look at the local adjustments, um, okay, you can see that I made a circle here. I'm showing this. So this circle here, I made this part very yellow. I increased uh, the exposure. So um, the whites. Well, this is just the, how I adjusted it, but this is just an example of if the light, so light source is different in the image, um, you could move your um, radial filter around. And this one, I believe, is just a second layer to really emphasize that nice sunrise light. See, I only brought up the, high, uh, the whites and the temperature here. Um, just as an example, if you also want to use the graduated filter to create like this wash of light, what you can do is just go this way and then increase, let's say, the whites. Oop. Okay. So you increase the whites. Like so. But that's too much. 
not good for this image. Okay. But this is just an example of how the radio filter can be customized for each image. It's not always um, placed in the center like the image that I shared with you. So um, before exporting your image, oops, resume, share, new, share. Sorry guys, I'm gonna, there. So um, before you export your image, you do want to look at what the purpose, what the main focus point. So let's look at this image, for example. The light is coming. This is a sunrise image I, um, Ilona took for me when we were in Thailand. This is where the sunrise was. Um, so I really increased the yellow here and I created a little reflection in the water here. And this is the main light direction of the image. So this is what you can look at before finishing your final edit. Okay, I think we have a ton of questions. Let me just quickly finish how I export the image. Yes, yes, knew that. Great question, just in time. I'm gonna go over the export settings um, quickly. Uh, new share. Okay. Let's go back to my original image that we edited together today. Okay. When you're, okay, so once you have finished editing this picture, you can right click to export, export, and um, we can go in and look. So usually what I like to do is save the picture in the original folder so that I can keep track of all of my images because by now I have like six four terabyte hard drives. So um, I save them in the same folder so I know where to look for them. I like to rename it to, let's say, Sunset in Bangkok usually. And I have a sequence if I'm exporting multiple um, images. And then for the file, um, we're going to export with JPEG because this is for Instagram, right? I like to keep the quality pretty high between um, 80 to 100. I don't think it's necessary to go all the way to 100 because this is just for Instagram. And obviously we're doing RGB. RGB means that it is color used for the screen. And the opposite of it is CMYK, that's for print. So for this, we're just using RGB. And then image resizing. Um, I like to, I like my images to be pretty big. So this is your personal preference. You don't have to do it exactly like this. Whatever size you prefer it to be is fine, but, um, my resolution, I always keep it at 300 so that it is very, very high definition. Okay, and then just sharpen for screen. And that's basically it, export. And so that concludes uh, the editing part. I'm just gonna show you very quickly how you can, um, some tips on how to improve your editing skills. And then we'll move on to the Q&A. So, First of all, of course, the key, sorry, it's loading. Oops, um, <laughs> I clicked on something. Okay, I'm gonna keep talking. The key to improving is to keep practicing and watch a lot of YouTube videos. If you have the budget, you could sign up for courses. Um, those are all really helpful and also by practicing with um, other photo, photo, photography enthusiasts, um, watching other photographers, maybe you could ask a photographer to shadow them, um, watch them how, how they edit. That's all really helpful. Also, if you can learn about the basic concepts of color, light, design, it really helps you to get a better, better visual of everything. It improves your skills greatly. Um, and uh, also you can go to the bubble up folder that I've curated 
Let me show you. It has a lot of resources here. Um, lots of great videos that I have already watched. So the tutorials are in here. There's one specifically for photo editing. There's one for photo taking. Um, but also looking at other people's work can be um, really inspiring for you. I've listed some amazing photographers in here and their editing is always super on point. I also have, this folder is just for photo shoot ideas. So you can go through all these people's profiles and just look at their um, photos and sort of dissect it. Um, all of the slides, I will add them to this folder um, after we finish this. So do not worry, it will all be available for you. Um, and also one more thing. Um, you guys are going to be the first to hear it, but I'm currently creating a full content creation course. Um, it will be a very, very comprehensive course that will show you everything from the beginning to the end, obviously with lots of editing tips, editing tutorials, um, photo taking tips, and even like travel, um, how to plan a travel itinerary where you can get the most photos out of it and all that. So um, I, it is in the works and um, I'm just excited to tell you guys that first. So it's first to hear it. Okay, but um, let's go into the Q&A, okay? I know we have so many questions. Okay. Rain asks, how do you know, oh, ah, sorry, it's, I'm being flooded. How do you know if the camera has high dynamic range? Um, yeah, this is a good question. Yeah, you should go look up a lot of, okay. There's a lot of great YouTube channels that share um, camera specs and they compare the cameras based on different budgets. So if you just go online, because um, I can't give you a specific answer for um, what camera you should be looking for because the whole camera will affect how the picture turns out, even how you take it will affect it. But in general, Sony has a higher dynamic range than Canon. That's why I switched. Um, let's do more questions. Okay, sorry, this just, um, how long do you usually take to edit a picture? Um, it can be very, very fast if I know what I'm doing and if it's not a tricky picture. If the light is really weird and funky and um, especially if it was taken indoors, that can often be a little harder because indoors, you know, there's usually like weird yellow light coming from the top. Um, so usually like 20 minutes, 10 minutes maybe to edit a photo. Um, okay, I'm just, I'm going to go through all these questions and mostly answer the ones that are only relevant to editing, okay? If you have extra, the questions, you can always um, DM me. Hey, um, is it best to use a laptop and mouse to edit with Lightroom Classic? Can you use an iPad and pen? Um, it is mostly a desk, desktop app. You should um, be using the laptop for this. If you want to use an iPad or your phone, your phone, you can use Lightroom Mobile. Your iPad, you can use Lightroom CC, which is the simplified version where all of your photos that you edit can be saved to the cloud and then you can like edit on your foot, uh, edit on your laptop and then go edit on your iPad. So it depends on what you prefer. Okay. Okay. Um, I have a lot of color feed questions. I think um, that's kind of different than our topic today. So please just DM me if you have a specific filter. Um, radial filter to change the sky. Okay, this question, I think what she, Cheryl means is, can you use a radial filter to change the sky? You can use a graduated filter to change the brightness, darkness, you can change the highlights, you can change the color of it, like how yellow you want it to be. But if you want the sky to look completely different, you do need Photoshop and swap out the sky, which I tend not to do. Um, okay, what, um, will the course, 
Um, so will the course I be creating available for everyone? Yes, it will be. However, it will be a paid course because I will be putting all of my knowledge that I have gained um, in the last three and a half years into this course. It will be everything, how to color coordinate a feed, how to edit photos, how to take photos, how to take photos of yourself, how to set up a flat lay, how to set up a photo shoot for, let's say like a picturesque breakfast or um, window view hotel. It's going to be very comprehensive and I'm gonna put everything in there. So stay tuned for that. Um, does importing photo from the camera to Dropbox or Google Drive affect the image quality? I believe not. The best way to transfer photos if you have um, Apple products is just AirDrop. If you don't have Apple products and you don't want to compromise the quality, you want to use Dropbox or Google Drive or Bubble Up. Um, Okay, what are the questions? Uh, oh, oh my God, there's 34 new messages. Okay, sorry, there's so many questions about the course, but I'm going to um, answer more questions about the editing, okay? Okay, if you, Sarah, Sarah asks, do you have an app to edit quickly? Definitely Lightroom Mobile and um, other apps are Visco, um, Snapseed, and Facetune. These are mobile apps and you can edit a photo pretty quickly. Um, if you want to do an instant edit, you can consider purchasing presets from other creators. Um, basically what that means is they've already done the settings for you. Um, and you can just apl apply one click and your photo will be edited basically. Okay, I do have a question about cinema graphs. I'm just gonna answer this really quickly. For cinema graphs, do you only use Photoshop? Yes, I create all of my cinema graphs in, my, in Photoshop. Um, okay, this is just uh, the chat part. I'm going to look at the Q&A part. Um, how do you install the app in the computer? You can go to Adobe Creative Live. Once you pay for um, Adobe Creative Live, they will, you can start downloading all of the apps. Okay. Um, Miriam asks, if you shoot in front of the window, do you need to have light coming from the opposite part too? I assume you mean the window is really, really bright and you're inside and you're really dark. Um, do you need to brighten the indoors? Yes, usually it would be ideal if um, the contrast is low. So you can light up the inside if you want. However, keep in mind, if you're shooting in front of a window, you're gonna have a reflection in the window and that's not the best look. And it would be tougher to edit because the light is usually a different color to the light that's outside. Um, but with a good camera and with editing, you can always um, do it without lighting, using lighting for the inside. Okay, I'm just gonna look at the new messages. Okay, how do I feel about using presets? Do I sell my own presets? Currently, I am not selling my own presets. Um, I do edit most of my images from scratch and because it's quick for me to edit, but um, I've been getting a lot of requests and I'm looking into that, but I do have a standard way I edit certain types of pictures. So it would be possible for me to create my presets, but um, we'll see. <laughs> okay. Um, someone asks, you export to Photoshop after Lightroom. So I don't generally, uh, as a JPEG. Yeah, so when I said I edit in Lightroom first and then I go to Photoshop, it's only if I need to fix my skin or, uh, you know, delete something in the back. Let me show you one quick example before we wrap this up so that you know what I mean. 
So if I am in Lightroom right now, let's say, let's say this picture. And I need to um, fix this bruise on my thigh. I just, I'm very clumsy. So I have a lot of bruises. What you want to do is go to edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop. And then that will directly export this Lightroom picture that you have already edited into Photoshop. Give it one second to load. Sorry, it's a very slow, guys. Okay, let me see if there are other questions while I'm here. Um, so uh, Ulrich, I think <laughs> you said um, that I edit in Lightroom first and I go to Photoshop. If you do it the other way around, it is not wrong. I just prefer to edit the colors in Lightroom because I think it's easier, it's more powerful. And then I go into power, uh, Photoshop, sorry, and I do any adjustments as necessary. So let's zoom in here and just clean up this really ugly thing here. Okay, so um, I am going to use the clone tool, as you can see, clone stamp tool. Um, basically what you can do is Create a clone of this area and then put it on here with the clone stamp tool. So let's do that. Um, it's nice, nice. Okay, then delete this mole here. <laughs> and there's another bruise here. So let's do the same. Copy this area by clicking on option. And then stamp, 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 stamp. Look, gone. Perfect. Um, just I'm also going to quickly do this. Look at this reflection of this flower. And um, because I don't like it, let's go into this lasso tool here. Select it. And then go into edit. Uh, fill here, fill. And then choose content aware. Magic! It disappeared. Awesome. Okay. Also, let's just say I want to like move this and have it be here. Okay. This is quite the edit. <laughs> um, what I can do is use the lasso tool again. The shortcut key is L. Okay. Oops. Let's include the shadows. And you can duplicate, uh, wait, go to layer. Uh, no, no, no. I usually use shortcuts, but I am, um, but then you won't be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm trying to find the function in the, the, um, uh, where is it? Layer via, okay. Uh, layer copy via, <laughs> layer via copy. Where is layer via copy? Uh, 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 uh. uh, am I blind? Because it was under new right up top. Okay. Uh, nope. I don't know. If, if you click on new, it's going to open a little, like go to layer where you just were. <gasps> go to new. Yeah, layer via copy. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh my God. Amy, are you uh, secretly an editing pro? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just saw it when you, when you scrolled Thank by. Thank you. It. Oh my God. You're Sorry, welcome. you guys. <laughs> 
usually I use the shortcut and because I have customized my own shortcut, that's why I, um, I wanted to show you. So you can layer via cut means you remove this whole thing from the image. So we're going to do layer via copy. See, then now we copied it. You can move it around. You can bring it here. Um, you can see it's not blending in perfectly. So let's make it a bit brighter. Mm, it's a bit too yellow. So let's um, make it less yellow. Okay. And then I just like go in and I um, delete the edges like this. Blend, blend, blend. There you go. I mean, this is a very, very rough um, edit. I usually do a lot more, but you know, this, you get an idea, like you can do a lot in Photoshop and then you can use the same content aware tool to get rid of this. So that's what I use Photoshop for it mainly. Um, yep. Okay. <laughs> Sorry guys with that confusion with the layer view copy. Um, okay. So, Great question, Michelle. You can fix your skin in Lightroom, um, but it is not as powerful as Photoshop. Um, basically, let's just say you want to fix this in Lightroom. You do have this tool here. Oh, sorry, I didn't share my screen. <laughs> uh, share screen. Oh no, I am sharing my screen. We are not seeing it. Um, can you see it now? No. Okay, that's weird. Share Lightroom. This there you go. Okay, sorry guys. Um, so if you want to fix this, you can go into this tool here called Spot Removal. Click on it and click on the wrong button. And then just tap on here. And what it will do is um, it will find a spot that's like a similar color and then it will just replace it. So this is a quick way to do it, but I like to do it in Photoshop for me um, because I find that to be the most customer, customers, customization. You can customize it better in Photoshop. Um, so San asks, doing that again from Photoshop to Lightroom. Um, what you want to do if you're expo exporting from Lightroom is you want to export it to Photoshop. Mm, I'm not sure what you mean about jumping from Photoshop to Lightroom. Um, okay, I think, uh, yeah, I think that that's a lot of questions. Sorry, oh my God, we've gone, we've gone quite um, a lot over the time. It's actually been an hour and a half. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you check out the folder that is in here. If you know a lot of the questions that you ask are actually in here. If you want to learn how to delete um, things from the background, see this is a great video for how to remove people from Photoshop. Oh, um, I need to share it. Okay, sorry. So in the how to edit like a pro, you have how to remove people from photos in Photoshop, how to sharpen and export, um, probably similar to what I've told you. Um, but these are some great ones that I have watched and you know, I will continue to share more in the folder as well. So definitely make sure you check these out. Okay. Um, Okay, Natalia asked, do you see a big difference between Lightroom Classic and the cloud-based Lightroom? Yes, I, I don't like the cloud-based Lightroom at all, personally. I always use Lightroom Classic and I just think it's a lot um, more professional. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Um, so I hope you all stay safe and stay indoors and um, yeah. Practice social distancing, guys, and learn how to edit. And stay tuned for my course. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank Thanks, you, for Tina. Time. Thanks, Amy. Okay.
like end meeting for all or